and what empathy is is you know and empathy is not a bad thing also just to mention that and it's often necessary in our therapeutic relationships but we <laughs> when we operate on this empathetic level oftentimes we're connecting with people's suffering and when we do this a lot it becomes so tiring but being you know in a moment and holding a space for a person and being there with their suffering sometimes we can't help but just take it on ourselves you know if I've had the experience of working with people with severe depression and just feeling sad and heavy after I've worked with them. And empathy can often lead to that. And there was a research study that was really interesting, but they're a, bunch, a group of neurologists. They um, studied pairs of people and in the pair, one person was receiving an electric shock, so it's kind of a pain stimulus, and they did an MRI on their brain and they saw where the pain registered in the brain. So at the same time this person was getting a pain stimulus, someone else was watching that person receive mm -hmm. the stimulus and they, their brain was also being monitored. And they found that um, the brain scans looked similar, that the, the um, pain was registering in the mind of the observer, even if they were actually physically receiving the pain. You know, and there's stuff out there, mirror neurons and this kind of stuff, but... Um, Wow. <laughs> just observing pain and just hearing about it, it the brain doesn't really know the difference sometimes that it'll trigger the pain, pain stimulus in our brain when we do um, engage empathically like that. And so what the re researchers presented was that, um, you know, there's empathy and then there's something called compassion. So the same researchers, they got um, these Buddhist monks in, and they had them meditate on the idea of compassion. Now, compassion are just warm feelings of kindness towards other people. And compassion even involves just the acceptance of the suffering and not taking it on, but just sending loving feelings toward the person who's suffering. And they did the brain scans of these monks who were meditating compassion and saw a completely different part of the brain light up. And so the researchers are recommending, you know, those self-compassion um, practices. I just mentioned the self-kindness, common humanity, mindfulness, and being able to pair compassion with empathy where, you know, if we're in a moment of suffering with a client and they're suffering, not to take it on ourselves, but to make sure we're being mindful and holding them in a loving space and actually consciously calling up warm feelings of support for the client rather than taking it on ourselves is a healthier way to to work and will decrease our risk for burnout.